What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Even though it was a completely different timeline, I felt serious aversion to the person that had killed me. We definitely needed to exercise caution when it came to antagonizing the Empire. I agree. The Empire is a lot more dangerous than what you think, Ryumaru san After you died, Veldora went on a rampage, but the Empire was still able to fend him off. While fighting Veldora, Hanada was murdered, and Chloe leapt into the past. Afterwards, Kronoa could only remember certain things from her fragmented memory. Still, there was no doubt that the Empire used the clash between the rampaging Veldora and Kronoa to their advantage. Given that we had witnessed firsthand the power of Kronoa, just being able to intervene in such a battle was a feat in itself. And if that was the case, then the Empire's strength was definitely greater than what we expected. Ruminas and Leon looked like they had the same idea. Everyone had a growing sense of urgency regarding the Empire. Of course, in this somber atmosphere, Veldora just had to blurt out his off-topic opinion. Me going on a rampage? I find that hard to believe. He asserted, a smug look on his face. Everybody's reaction to that outburst could be summed up with, what is this guy even saying? Veldora's impressive ability to joke around like that in such a heavy atmosphere was quite. Wait, why are you all looking at me like that? There's no way a gentleman such as I would go out of control like that. Well, you see, given that he used to run amok in the olden days, it was easy for anyone to imagine that he had let his emotions get the better of him and gone on a rampage. Then again, watching my death moments before his revival might have set off his wrath, or something like that. When I thought about it that way, I couldn't help but feel a little happy. Come on, let bygones be bygones. So, I decided to appease Veldora with a bit of warmth in my voice. The Empire is dangerous, we ended the discussion with that conclusion. Next, we analyzed Kronoa's memories by having Chloe recall as far back as possible. After Veldora was defeated by the Empire, the world entered a tumultuous period of conflict. In the war involving the West and the East, it was the Empire who possessed the upper hand. Milam made her move in the midst of all this. My death set off her wrath against the Empire. However, before she could cause any meaningful damage against them, Gi intervened. As a result, history wound up repeating itself, a devastating battle between Milam and Gi. De Gruel and Ruminas also clashed with each other, adding fuel to the fire, their armed conflict bringing even more destruction to the world. And Kranoa fought someone and ultimately died in the process. She had rushed to wherever there was battle and fought for as long as her life still lasted. All she had left was a lust for destruction, indiscriminately taking down powerful people, friend or foe. So that's why she couldn't remember who killed her. The number of individuals capable of defeating someone as strong as Kronoa is certainly limited, right? It's Gi. I can only think of Gi. Ruminas and Leon immediately responded to my mumbling. I thought so, too. Despite the outcome of the duel between Gi and Milam being unclear, the only person who could kill Kronoa was him. Be that as it may, we didn't know the exact reason as to why Gi would kill Kronoa, so it might not have been him. So, why is Kronoa so fond of me? Judging by Chloe's story thus far, I didn't think I had any connection with Kronoa. She was revived after my death, so we never encountered one another. And yet, no matter how you looked at it, Kronoa obviously adored me. I wasn't that dense to have missed the obvious signs. She was already like that the first time we met, now that I think about it. When I had unwittingly summoned her to stabilize Chloe, the moment she laid her eyes on me, she hugged and kissed me. I was a little bit shocked because I thought that it was our first time meeting each other, but I surmised there was a pretext to her behavior. That's because... Because Ramura helped me. You were definitely the one who saved me in that future, where all I did was rampage. Kronoa took over Chloe's story. Hey, I was about to explain it to them. It's fine, let me continue. After all, I'm also you, so aren't we in this together? From a bystander's point of view, Chloe acted like she had multiple personalities. Kronoa could apparently interject herself into the conversation as long as Chloe wasn't actively suppressing her. It was something we just had to get used to. And so, Chloe and Kronoa swapped back and forth as they told their story. Based on Chloe's, I mean Kronoa's, memory, I wasn't dead in the future. It was indisputably the Empire that had defeated me, but by all accounts, I had somehow revived afterwards. Fair enough. If I survived, then that meant, Great Sage, the predecessor of Raphael San, was alive too. It appeared to have taken some time, but in the end, it also managed to pull through. Unfortunately, the world had seen dramatic changes. A great war erupted between the East and the West, and a fierce power struggle arose among the demon lords. 
Hmm, it's not hard to imagine what I would be feeling then. After all, it was still me. There was no doubt in my mind that I would have desperately tried to find friends who had managed to stay alive. Saving everyone was an impossible task but helping those I had a connection with was definitely feasible. And through that, I found Chloe, Kronoa. The crucial parts of Kronoa's fragmented memory were, regrettably, what she could not remember clearly. Despite the setback, we could still perceive the flow of events, albeit vaguely. I evidently met Kronoa and ended up fighting her countless times. And with my earnest efforts, she would have eventually returned to her normal self. Nevertheless, what the world endured was simply irreparable. As we all expected, I indeed fought Gi. I don't know how or why it happened, but the one thing I'm certain of is that Ramuru was already gone at that point. Yet, Ramuru had hugged me while I was dying. After I finally passed on, I recovered my consciousness and saw myself, Chloe, and the previous Ramuru together. I wasn't surprised about Gi fighting her. More importantly, the strange thing that occurred just before Kronoa was about to die was probably her time travel activating, but that in itself was not enough to explain how she arrived at Chloe's timeline. Perhaps I did something to make that transpire. When you saw me, had I evolved into a demon lord yet? You had. The Ramuru I met then was stronger compared to the current Ramuru. Oh, you can tell that just by looking? I was under the belief that I was pretty strong at the moment, but I doubt Kronoa would misjudge someone's strength. If that was true, then I could only infer that losing the people I knew spurred me on to do something crazy. Honestly, all of this was irrelevant to me now anyway. Then again, there was also the issue of the Empire. Rather than stressing over it, we should view the situation in a positive light. An opportunity to motivate everyone and get them stronger. Well, let's just keep it at that. Besides, if that alternate Rimuru was stronger than me, then surely, Great Sage, had also evolved into, Wisdom King Raphael. If so, then it wouldn't have been too far-fetched if it did something unthinkable like sending Kronoa's spirit and memories to the young Chloe. Even you can't deny the possibility. With that, we tentatively cleared up the presumed future chain of events. I guess everything turned out fine. I said, nonchalant. Hanata gave me a sidelong glare. Aren't you taking this a bit lightly? Don't say that. Chloe is safe now, and Veldora's already been revived. As long as we keep an eye on the two, we don't have to worry about them going out of control. Therefore, isn't the only problem we have to deal with the Empire? I answered with a bright smile. That's right. If de Gruel ever attacks, I will take care of it. This is my repayment to you for helping Chloe. Ruminas and Chloe seemed really close, and because I had saved Chloe, my stocks with her reached an all-time high. Thanks to that, it appeared Ruminas and I would be able to maintain a better relationship than ever before. One of our main concerns involved de Gruel's treachery. Thankfully, Ruminas vowed to take care of it for us. She even promised to protect the West without me needing to ask. The Western nations had always, by nature, been Rumina's domain. Even though some of the regions had disputes with Gi, he only saw their interaction as nothing more than a game. Ruminas apparently came to the conclusion that there was no use fretting over it. The bigger problem was de Gruel. Obviously, we were wary of the fact that he would become hostile one day. He is going to join the upcoming war. Ruminas declared. So there is a high possibility that he will take advantage of it when the Empire ultimately moves. I was still skeptical. But de Gruel's sons are currently living in this country, you know? I don't think he would use military force against us that easily. In my opinion, there had to be a reason for de Gruel's actions. Huh? Did you say, de Gruel's sons? Are you sure? Yup. They're Sheehan's subordinates now and have been working hard on their training. In response to my words, Sheehan crisply remarked. Yes, that is true. Although they still have a long way to go, they've recently shown good results in their training. And when I treat them to my home-cooked meals as a reward, they cry tears of joy. They are such a cute lot. Cry tears of joy, sounds rather dubious to me. While eating food cooked by the woman you loved would certainly leave you happy, that entire premise depended on the food being edible. Actually, as long as you tolerated the look and texture, you could technically eat Sheehan's cooking. Well, I reckon it was fine to leave them to their own devices. If the people themselves didn't complain, then I had no reason to interfere. Ruminas looked astounded upon hearing that de Gruel's sons were in my nation. That said, she regained her composure within a matter of seconds. Sounds like it's true. Then, someone has manipulated de Gruel. No, it sounds weird if I say it that way since it's something that has taken place in the future. I suppose we can say someone might manipulate him. Ruminas stated after careful consideration. A war had broken out in the future, but we were at peace right now. There must be a reason behind de Gruel harboring such territorial ambition. 
When I had met him during Walpurgis, I never got the impression that he was a bad person. I figured I should ask Dagura and the other two sons for a possible explanation. If he were experiencing any problems, we could lend a helping hand by offering advice. And if it could be solved through diplomacy, then it was a much better solution compared to armed conflict. We will also look into the matter on my side. All right, I shall entrust that to you. I do not wish to engage in some unreasonable battle, after all. We still had time to spare for the results of our investigation regarding de Gruel. Ruminas would also be on the lookout, just in case, as it would be troublesome if de Gruel truly did conspire with the Empire. Lewis and Gunther nodded together, implying that we could trust them to stay vigilant. Next up is the situation with Guy. I began. I'll tell him. Leon volunteered. It was useless if we complained to Guy since this whole ordeal took place in the future. On the other hand, our worries weren't exactly assuaged, either. A better plan would be to explain the circumstances to Guy instead. However, I wasn't sure how much information we could actually disclose. Guy is a mediator. Although it has nothing to do with me now, I feel like he may or may not have destroyed me a long time ago. I can't really remember it clearly, so it doesn't count. Veldora suddenly confessed. I didn't know where to start, what to do, or how to go about it. What did Guy being a mediator even mean? This was also the first time I'd heard about a fight between Guy and Veldora long ago, where Veldora was annihilated. By the way, I thought that saying something along the lines of, I can't remember it, so I still did not lose, was a petty excuse that children used. But that was a bit mean, so I decided not to comment. Oh, Guy sure does some nice things. Remarked Ruminas. Mediator, huh? Guy is not an ally of humanity, but he is undeniably not an enemy either. It's safe to assume the reason why he killed Kronoa in that future was because he feared the idea that if she, the lust for destruction, incarnate, were to be left unchecked, it would lead to the collapse of the world. Leon concluded. What the heck is a mediator, anyway? Everyone else had already grasped the situation. I asked the question outright, and Ruminas was the one who explained it to me. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Anime World, Lumina Sekati, Marshall Lee, Project Revspec, Tokenom, Psycho Cat, Gina Esteoko, Ashish Jawadikar, Ivan Rado, and last but not least, shout out to Leonard Moore.